Hello and welcome to another episode of TFG Indian Football Roundup. This is Kevin with me. We are in that weird phase where nothing much is happening. Some signings here and there, uh, some pre-season. We have some major tournaments coming up that will kick off the season. It won't be like I-League and ISL and the very crux of the season getting off to the mark at the very beginning. But it's going to be... Calcutta Football League, it's going to be two run cup, it's going to be some reserves, some juniors, some academy products being tested out. You know, the beta version of the season of what's to come that is so enjoyable to watch for the Indian football aficionados who want to see the youth taking the center stage, who want to see these uh, nostalgic tournaments coming back to life and uh, just giving us a very different flavor because once i-league starts once isl starts we're getting back into that same rhythm those same teams get into a predictable pattern of what the coaches are going to do this is where the experiment happens this is where you get to see the very raw passion of the fans who are really there just for the club just for the upcoming talent who are t- supporting Indian football in the truest sense even when the biggest prizes are not on the line. Are you excited for the season, Kevin? Definitely. This is the time when uh, we're expecting which team, the which which is the youth team that is going to perform the best. We, we did hear about some of the ISL teams wanting to send their uh, reserves uh, or the under-19 teams. All of a sudden, uh, they start making uh, one of the oldest tournaments in, in the world look like as if it doesn't matter to them at all. You know, you're sending your your reserve teams when uh, prestige matters uh, and one starts and others, others starts following. Sometimes I fail to understand why are we even having this tournament and so much riding on it and uh, we don't even have it uh, year on year. But yes, Chiranjit, uh, you know, in the off-season, something has to be done and probably because the pre-season is, uh, of the first team is not yet kicked off. So this is the best that they, that they can offer. I would say uh, tournaments like Durant Cup are still very important because uh, they used to be the backbone of uh, Indian football system back in the day. Uh, I mean, for those who remember a time even before NFL, even before we had a national league, you had your Federation Cup, you had your Rovers Cup, you had your uh, Sait Nagji. There was that Sikkim Gold Cup, IFA Shield and Durant Cup. These were the tournaments that you wanted to watch because the best in the country would play there. And whoever wins, most of them would be considered the best club of the season. And uh, it, it was quite fascinating. It was a storyline that used to play out over the 12 months of this club getting a jump over that club so are they going to get back at them uh, in the rematch uh, in rovers i mean this guy won the ifa shield so are they, is there going to be a revenge story in rovers or duran uh, that's how it used to play out and it was a fascinating time of course we wanted a national league and uh, since that happened that has taken precedence and these tournaments have sort of gone down in value but i believe they still hold their own unique niche and uh, that's what is happening. As for your uh, comment about why ISL teams are sending reserves, uh, I've been going out and talking to some people and quite frankly many of them don't even have the players in action now. Most of them are on holidays and uh, they did not plan to start everything so early so some of them have no option but to send a reserve team. For some it's a question of not sending uh, some of the main players and getting them uh, look bad against I-League clubs uh, in, in a big stage because even if most of the games don't end up on uh, TV, this is going to be uh, well talked about in the media and this is going to be seen as a serious tournament. And uh, this is where the Dorant com- committee which is uh, hosting the tournament has sort of fallen short because they gave ISL teams the leeway to send the reserves, send the B teams and that puts the other clubs in a spot because are they going to field their underprepared because this is the just the start of the season most of the players are not in their rhythm are they going to put their main players in there and what if they look bad against some ISL reserve team there's nothing to win if they win they will say oh yeah they just beat some junior players if they don't do well which may happen this is football they just end up losing face so that sort of prompted east bengal coach uh, alejandro meninges who also has calcutta football league to worry about because there's pressure on him mohan bagan won it last time he wants to get the momentum back and uh, get east bengal to win the calcutta football league title this time so two simultaneous tournaments for him 
so he wants two teams to play uh, in those two tournaments so he wants under 19 to play in duran cup and of course duran cup suddenly uh, realized what if east bengal mohan bagan and mohammedan sporting all decide to field uh, junior teams and then there will be no interest left in the tournament at all because these are the three clubs who have the fan bases in kolkata and who are supposed to draw a crowd to the stadiums so it, it's a bit of lack of foresight i would say also the clubs should understand because this is third oldest tournament in the world very prestigious when it finally gets underway there will be a lot the, of the problem yeah. is uh, we don't have a calendar in place and if we yeah. we never plan to have it in the first place in in a, in a year's time in two years time this this is bound to happen all of a sudden you get a notice in an intimation uh, about a month back that this is the tournament that we are planning to have uh, this is the venue and you can't just have clubs being prepared all the time they need to be having their their months set you can't just enter a tournament with with a team that is not even on the field not has been practicing they are on holidays they are on off season you can't be just having a tournament just to fill up the calendar it has to be included at the start of the season or at least an intimation saying no oh, this is tentatively the plan to have it so and so venue so and so time of the year that gives everybody ample time to prepare with their best teams in you know and, and that will also resolve the problem of having uh, another tournament that uh, might be of sim- similar importance you you need to have uh, tournaments seeing best of teams you can't be having an a, a team going to an, one tournament and a b team going to another tournament that, that that's not de- how development should be happening yeah you have to understand the compulsion of both sides east bengal mohan bagan and mohammedan sporting should understand their role that okay they are supposed to be the drivers of this tournament they are supposed to be drumming up all the publicity and interest so maybe they could handle this better maybe they could arrange a situation where they can rotate players uh, well enough uh, that without calling this a junior team they can field most juniors and uh, a few first team players and uh, you know make do on both cfl and uh, duran cup but then again they are being put in a worse situation if they are fielding like half the junior team and calling it the east bengal or mohan bagan first team and that does badly against a bengaluru fc b team makes them look bad because they're not even fielding their first team they're calling it the first team and uh, risking losing face so in all that it just seems as, as you said it it just does not seem like something that was well planned it seems uh, the whole thing was shoehorned in and uh, one example just hours before we started uh, recording this podcast uh, we had a durant committee issue an update on the fixtures so some matches uh, that will take place in the salt lake stadium they were scheduled for 3 pm they are now being moved to 6 pm which makes you wonder why now i mean did they have no idea that having 3 pm matches on a week day will affect the attendance all of the stadiums have flood lights incidentally east bengal stadium has flood lights mohan bagan ground has flood lights kalyani has flood lights salt lake stadium obviously has flood lights and they all work they all host matches calcutta football league i league etc matches uh, in the last 12 months under flood lights and it it's been pretty okay so why are you mostly focusing on 3 pm kickoffs if you want to sell tickets and uh, grab eyeballs and potentially even get ratings if you can get a channel to show the matches and by the way who's who's showing the matches star sports is showing semi finals and finals they're saying we're talking to dt sports about the rest no more word on that i mean yeah the whole thing is shoehorned in uh, and it's just a bad situation for everybody to be in so uh, that way it, it looks bad i still would say i'm super excited about this though because i've never attended a duran cup match people in kolkata care a lot about duran cup they will come out and support the tournament and even if it's 3 pm east bengal and mohan bagan ground will see good amount of crowd the army is organizing this army issues the construction permits so ahead of the tournament we had mohan bagan ground constructing an away dressing room uh, you know cafeteria a referee room i think a broadcast center is also being discussed so infrastructure development is happening because of durant cup but just if we if we had a heads up 
seven eight months earlier maybe the clubs would have been better prepared maybe we would have been better prepared i just include in the co- calendar you know if everything is planned per season it just you know helps coverage it helps broadcasting it helps uh, fans to be looking forward to a tournament it's a win-win situation for everybody you know it, it's not just telecasting matches it's also about having the teams play more games we we always talk about players not getting enough matches before they head to the national camp this is a tournament which is renowned this will be you know when you have when you have a lot of things riding on a tournament you obviously will give your best you know that increases the competitive value of the tournament as well so you will have players giving their best on the field you know it won't be just like an under under 19 tournament this is something that can be you know worked in a planned manner and we can you know see a lot more output from prestigious tournaments like this it's a bit tough to get a tournament of national importance stuck into this uh, calendar because it's already so crowded at the moment we have uh, CFL and local leagues will start now uh, we will have super cup after that then i league and isl will take place they if they had to do this tournament they would have had to do it now but again you have to give everything time you have to do everything uh, with a lot of heads up with a lot of preparation so that these situations do not arise at the last moment talking about time talking about preparation talking about shoehorning talking about uh, lack of planning fifa and aiff have gotten in communication about i league and isl and the restructuring and the first full relegation and the whole lot so i league clubs wrote to fifa gave them a copy of the fsdl aiff master rights agreement uh, raised their objections about it told them that we are suddenly getting forcefully relegated to second tier status while isl is suddenly uh, unilaterally being promoted to top division and it doesn't have a promotion relegation we are not getting a chance to get into it in any way why is the ground being taken out from underneath our feet for no fault aiff got a reply from fifa and uh, fifa are like hey remember we sent some experts down to india who went around the country and spoke to everybody and came up with a very succinct uh, road map for indian football that takes care of all the problems that would have solved the situation and uh, kept everybody happy by working towards a unified league what's happening on that and uh, as you know the status of that report officially has never been released aiff got it last year they have been sitting on it because obviously there's some things in it that they don't want everybody to see and if only some website had published a leaked copy of that report it would have been very helpful to see it right i mean to see what was written in that report and see what afc and fifa think how indian football should move forward and how much that vision contradicts what aiff and fsdl are propagating right now yeah chiranjee you know you know the ideal situation would have been that uh, why why doesn't somebody do it why doesn't somebody do it and 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 the thing was it did happen you no know, your wish did come oh, true oh it happened <laughs> Where did it happen? Uh, Which website, man? Oh, no, that, that's this this funny that uh, we have to talk about uh, something that we did it ourselves. And uh, Chiranjit, uh, you were the man behind this, and uh, you know things are coming back to haunt Indian football. FIFA is is you know right up there, not like an inactive body throwing things back at the A- AFF. Uh, uh, the points that uh, FIFA and AFC together j- jointly shared with uh, the AFF. in a in a bit to have everything sorted out the the leak that you you get got your hands on that's a good time to go back on that and just to understand uh, that everything that needed a solution was was provided but uh, no aff is uh, back to its best doing nothing at all well uh, of course raful patel met the i league clubs and uh, he said uh, you know there's going to be a unified league down the road and there's going to be promotion relegation that's what uh, they are finally coming out and saying let's have a 2 3 year uh, transformation period or uh, transition fee- period call it whatever you want and then we will have uh, everything that you need to have and uh, and a unified league but again at this point i don't know how much verbal assurances count because this is the same aif president that kept saying even after signing an mra that clearly says isl will be the most senior and prestigious league in the country 
he kept saying oh no 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 isl is just like a tournament i league will be our main focus we will develop i league and all that stuff at the same time nothing was done to make i league better i mean it, it's still existing it's actually getting more popular that just tells you how much organic popularity the clubs can generate without any promotion from aiff and fsdl so here's a organization that is just making things difficult every step of the way for the independent clubs and just laying out the red carpet for isl and uh, the franchises it's it's a bit frustrating to see like when you see what the difference between what they say and what they end up doing it's it's such heaven and hell difference between the two it's what do you even say and who do you even trust what is where is the meeting point what is there for aiff to say something to please the id clubs today and they get isl to be the top league and uh, id clubs get relegated forcefully to second tier and then what then what is uh, guaranteeing that they will follow up on everything right what what is the guarantee that they will not decide oh this matter needs to continue this closed league needs to continue for another 20 years because the in original investors need to make their money back so until they make their money back which i don't see them doing in 15 20 years because they are just piling on losses at the moment so until they are doing they have done it don't talk to us about promotion relegation and at that point it's too late because they've already done it the moment the seal of approval is uh, passed that isl gets the afc champions league qualifier slot and the existing top division clubs who are there by merit get forcefully relegated once that measure is passed i don't think there's much of a uh, backtracking from that moment and that's all they need to do every leverage everything that these uh, clubs hold dear will be lost at that moment they will have no power at all to take anything back and uh, that's where we are because this whole process is running down the clock if they are going to go to court fifa will stop taking interest in the matter because they don't want uh, outside interference right so fifa is being a bit proactive now but i don't know where this goes from here i don't know if this brings any resolution to the whole situation and if it doesn't and these clubs go to court then what i this this has not been tried on court before the master rights agreement of this nature has never been tested in a court of arbitration for sports you know the the result could be devastating if if there is a ban coming that would be devastating if there is a directive that puts an injunction injunction on everything and puts isl and i league future as as it is into jeopardy because there is an injunction and nothing can move forward that is devastating if the whole thing passes and top division clubs get forcefully relegated that is devastating not just for indian football but for world football because that just sets a precedent where anybody any corporation with enough money in the world can just go to a financially weak federation buy them out wholesale and kill all the existing clubs and relegate them and just prop up their own tournament with their own teams as the de facto new top division the the very idea of sanctity of club football will be uh, just just spat upon at that point uh, solution is is never the first uh, outcome of, of of this big war that is being raised you know it's more of desperation from the i league clubs because they are left with no resort at all you know they they've written to the prime minister of india they've not got Uh, any any support from there uh, that was never uh, going to happen that was that was a letter to draw the media's attention to it they never expected the prime minister to intervene i don't think they even want that to happen that was to just raise the point so that everybody takes notice and yeah, it's I, I in the end you don't want a you don't want a government to intervene and solve the matter also ultimately this is about a pressure game right the first outcome is obviously not going to be a result that we'll see from this it's 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 going to be dragged again but uh, we know you know the power is not on the i league club sides it's not going to take them to too far that they're just dwindling down on the numbers they're dwindling dwindling down on support so the, the, we can see what what's what's coming for the i league clubs uh, and uh, it was coming for a long time and now just that the end is near and you know, sadly the power uh, is is uh, is winning not the football over here it's so 
devastating for the clubs that you know, they've invested so much money time uh, planning but it's it's all going down the drain you know i just and the worst part is they see they, they don't see a result or an outcome coming but they all they see is you know things getting worse for them and that's that's the bitterness that uh, we can feel for for the ili clubs and fifa intervening uh, in trying to get the matter sorted is just a formality i don't see a, a fair outcome or a result coming out of uh, this you know, the, the step that has probably you know been uh, a formality for for fifa but uh, a unified league or an open league is difficult to see from the situation as an outcome well it has to either happen now to keep justice and there is a provision in the afc fifa report and that may be the reason why aiff does not want people to see this there is a provision that says we can have a unified league now with promotion relegation uh, and uh, they can just uh, have a new unified league with uh, 12 13 clubs Uh, from 2019 and uh, they can institute a system that does not have relegation at all i mean as long as uh, the 10 year contract of the isl franchise is last they will not have relegation but whoever wins the second tier league gets promoted and they can work out the financials it's it's possible if fsdl wants they can tweak the franchise fee system and work out the financials to uh, accommodate new clubs and literally only they are the ones who can do this but they completely rigid in the insistence that they want 15 crores or 13 crores or whatever it is up front from the uh, incoming clubs otherwise they don't even want to proceed with this and that is the biggest problem that is uh, indian that indian football is facing right now because okay the isl teams are spending a lot of money yeah and a lot of it is going to fsdl to the isl organizers but what about the money being spent by i league clubs what about the residential academies the grassroots outposts being built by isol fc what about what the real kashmir fc is doing out there you know recruiting a whole rejuvenating the youth of a whole new state and bringing them into the mainstream of indian football what about gokulam kerala fc transforming the stadium in calicut what about mohan bagan east bengal uh, spending money in real infrastructure development not maintaining what fifa did they are actually developing their own stadiums what about all these other clubs who are coming into indian football system playing lower league uh, with the vision of succeeding but just can't even think about it because there is a 15 crore entry entry fee into the limelight which excludes most clubs most clubs do not have the means to do this as long as we only value the money that is going into isl franchise fee and we just disregard all the money that has been spent over decades by all these other clubs without thinking about getting any profit out of it uh, to keep indian football alive to develop indian football as long as we only value one kind of investment and disregard everything else indian football will continue in this hellish situation so let's just see how this turns out and let's hope it results in the minimal amount of clubs dying from the fallout let's now move on to something way more pleasant something i've been looking forward to for a long time uh, noshad musa former indian international has played for many of the top clubs in the country east bengal uh, mohammedan sporting air india he's been a head coach of air india he's been a head of youth at pune fc He's worked with the Mumbai FC youth team, and now he is in Bengaluru FC, coaching the B team. He's the head coach of the reserves, and he's the head of youth, and he will be leading the Bengaluru FC team into the Durand Cup in a tournament where he has some golden memories, and in a city where he has spent some of the most memorable moments of his career. So we met in Bengaluru. We talked about his journey in Indian football. His uh, experience in the bengaluru fc youth system what the club is doing the new approach that they are bringing into youth development and where he thinks indian football will go from let's dive into the conversation and let the man speak for himself 
So first of all, uh, we are in the middle of some uh, celebratory times. Uh, you know, Bengaluru just celebrated six years anniversary, and a former club you played for, East Bengal, is also celebrating hundred years. So could you uh, give us, uh, you know, first starting with East Bengal, you know, some of the best moments that you have, uh, you know, remember uh, while you were playing there in East Bengal. In East Bengal. See, when we, when we talk about East Bengal and 97, it always had more than one East Bengal match. Yeah, that. Right. Yeah, with uh, record crowd of one like 32, whatever. Yeah. The figure, it keeps moving up and down, but whatever. So that's one match, it's, it, it will always uh, remain in the uh, and then the final. Yeah. Because the final was such, it was going uh, on all. And it was in, uh, extra time going on. Then where from Bruno from 30, 30, 40 yards he takes a shot at good. You know that that moment I can never forget because uh, till then the the stadium was echoing with the people sound, you know whatever yeah. the noise, chanting and all. But as the goal goes in, you know, and that uh, <laughs> that is something you know you don't get to see uh, as a player. Because there was no sound. It was only we can hear the Salogars celebrating and nothing else could be here. So that, that, those are the moments, you know. And then again, uh, for me, for me, like uh, it was the first victory against Mohan Bagan, the first match against Mohan Bagan. And then the next day training session, I was shocked to see the East Bengal flag. They hoist the flag. Yeah. And no club does that, you know, in a derby match. So it was something <laughs> different for me because we were in, I was before that I was in Churchill. We play Debo, it's a derby. You play Salgaonka, but all such thing never happened. So all those things were new and it was different. And it shows how much you know the rivalry or the love for the the passion for the club is. So so you have uh, also like uh, you know. Coming, uh, making way to Bengaluru FC, uh, you have been part of some of the most fascinating clubs that are around, you know, from uh, Pune FC to uh, Air India. Uh, so, could, uh, I mean, you started off uh, as a youth coach in Mumbai FC, mm -hmm. and, and uh, from there you went over to Pune FC. No, well, I went to Air India, Air India and for the I League for nine games, and then I went to Pune FC. Yeah, so. Uh, you have, been, you have been a part of like three of the high profile clubs uh, their youth setup. How do you see the progression in how the clubs approach youth uh, development over the years from the experience? See, when I was with Mumbai FC, uh, yes, they, they had a youth setup, but you know, it was not, uh, they had to fulfill the criteria, so we have a setup, you know, it was like that. But when I was with Pune FC, it was different because uh, they were more professional, because they wanted to do something for the youth. We had under uh, under 15 and under 18, which was residential, and then we had soccer schools going on, and then under 13, which was local, and during that time, there was no under 13 highly happening. So there was no need for us to have a team. Uh, but the way they ran the club was really professional. Everything was ordered, like what I see in Bangalore FC. Time I joined Bangalore FC, you know, I always relate with Bangalore FC to Pune FC. The professionalism, the way how they work, it's very similar, and the staff, you know, not only not only the technical staff, from the media team to the office staff, everyone, they are so professional, and the way they are working, you know, it's more of a teamwork, which is which I saw in Pune FC, yeah. and the same thing is happening here. Uh, a lot of staff from Pune FC have also come over to Bangalore FC, not yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. So, is this, uh, do you see this as like, uh, you know, the Pune FC and Bengaluru FC model as the ideal for Indian clubs to follow? Of course, I, I feel they should do that, you know, because uh, the way we are working on the grassroots, you know, you see last year, last year we won the Bangalore League, maybe after five years. But there were a lot of tweets uh, saying, you know, uh, there are no local players. You know, so my the question, the question was, where are the talents? You know, to have them in Bangalore FC. So now what Bangalore FC is doing, till, till last year we had under 15 and under 18, which was uh, residential. 
But this year what we started was under 13 as a residency. So under 18 is come to Bangalore. So under 15 and under 18 we will have it in Bangalore. So now under 13 again, this year we don't have enough uh, local. We have some two or three players. Yeah. And then what happens is, by we see that by next two years we have more coming in. So right now we have under 7, under 9, under 11, which are local. From the soccer school, we have some 12 centers going on. From there, we have selected the boys. And then, from there, we have selected the best. And they are playing the baby leagues. And they all are doing, all the all the teams, all the youths are doing well. So now, what we are looking for is, we have so many kids, so many times. Now, if you see the baby league, only 12, 12, 36 players are getting chance. All three age groups. There are 12 players getting registered. So that's not enough. So now what we want to do is have an elite group, a B team, like how we have senior team, B team. So like that in this age group, we want to have a B team also. So then more kids come in, more kids come in and they get matches. Because now Bangalore Football Association, they want to have a league. They want to start with under 13 and under 15. So maybe we want to promote more kids from Bangalore. So it, it's not a small process. It, it's, it, it's, going to, it, it's going to take time. You know, maybe another 5-6 years, we'll find more Bangalore players getting into Bangalore FC. Because when we were in Pune FC, it was the same thing. Why no more Pune boys are doing the thing? Because we don't have talent. But to bring talent, we need to work with the youths. So right now, we started under 7. So I'm sure within 5-6 years, we'll have more uh, local boys coming. When you're talking about like local talent, do you specifically mean the city or uh, you know, the whole state of Karnataka? Is, is there a plan to expand the program? See, right now, right now what happens is, we are working in Bangalore, our soccer schools are in Bangalore. Now we started in Ahmedabad and one in Pune. In Bangalore. Yeah. 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 So now what happens? So now, these four centers, we might uh, call them for games. So if we see some good talents, maybe we'll get from there also. So that's that's the main idea. It, it's not only again Ahmedabad it becomes out of Karnataka, you know, Pune becomes out of Karnataka. Again, it's Maharashtra. But still, if you get talent, why not? But main focus should be Karnataka, you know, whole of Karnataka. But right now we are working more on Bangalore because we have many centers here. Like all other places, we have only one center. So we are not expecting much of a talent, but when gradually when we increase, maybe we can get more talents. So in the national baby league setups, there will be different teams from the different academies, like one from Bangalore, one from Bangalore, yeah. one from Bangalore. Yeah. Uh, uh, Bangalore, baby league? Uh, or like if there is a national competition that you can participate in. No, there is no baby league from the national. No, not yet, but I mean. No, so, so right, now, see, right now AFF is only till under 30. Yeah. Okay. So baby league what happens is it happens in particular districts or states. State also it's not possible, it has to be different districts and baby league happen only on Saturday and Sunday because of schools and all. So it's always Saturday Sunday. So you cannot have a state baby league. It has to be districts. Yeah, like Bangalore. You can have some name in Delgaon, whatever, whatever you say, you know, it's like that. So, I mean, uh, do you think the uh, the setups in Bangalore and Ahmedabad are going to get enough match time uh, in the near future? That's what we need to we need to work on because uh, since we are now we have just started an academy, so what will be the strength? 20, 30, 40, whatever. So, with uh, 40 kids and one team, you cannot have a baby league. So the main main idea is once Bangalore FC comes in, a big name comes into a state, then what happens? Other academies want to come in, other and they want to have compete with Bangalore FC. You know, just a, it, that's how you can improve. Otherwise, it's not happening. So maybe Bangalore FC comes in, it, it brings more competition to the other academies or other clubs, and that way we can propose for baby league. Then. It's very important, you need to have more academies happening there. Ahmedabad, I'm sure you must not have heard of many clubs coming in. You just so have one RIFC is there. So, they are working, so they will have one team. So, what about the rest? You can't have baby league with two teams. 
so maybe it, it will take time it will take time but we need to do something so sir so you are also working uh, with the reserve side mm. and uh, so far it's been sort of slowly improving mm. uh, what do you think you know just looking at the current set of players that you have uh, what kind of <coughs> possibilities do you see of uh, players being promoted to the first team from here uh, and how many do you think will happen over the next 3 4 year period see we just started last year it's been 2 years now it's been 2 years and we had all young set of boys but this year we have signed uh, three players for the senior team it's a, it's a good thing and then this year the team what we have now is more of young players from last year we have only seven players okay and then this year we have some 22 players who are under 18 so from under 15 we have promoted 13 boys and from under 18 we have five boys so this 18 and five we have selected from outside so we have this set of 22 players who will be with us for two years now so again for the senior team giving players to senior team we can the seven players who are from last year reserve team so from there i'm expecting three or four players to get promoted next year but but again what happens is we have afc we we'll have afc and isl going together so then what happens is that's when the senior team coach takes three of my reserve team players and which was done by my roka also last class to last year so that those are the possibilities but yes now the reserve team they are set of young boys we can say two years but yeah i'll confirm at least four players can make it to the senior team next year okay and that's a good thing are you are you happy with the level of competition they are getting in second division uh, last year was not good for me yeah. it was it was very easy for me you know but yes the bangalore league was bit competitive for me then the, the first my first tournament i got to go to kashmir that was good for me playing against real kashmir you know Last year was really good for us, if you see. Uh, but this year we are playing a lot of tournaments. Now my first tournament we are going for Durangka, yeah. and when you are going for Durangka, you can imagine my under all 16 year old boys going to play in Durangka and team like East Bengal in my group. So those matches will really help them grow. So it's it's going to be officially the Bengaluru FC reserves who play in Durangka. Exactly. So you can you can imagine the level of matches they will get in them in their improvement, their development. So, do, but I mean, you have played in Durand Cup yourself, and uh, you you played in the final as well. Yeah. Uh, do you think, like you know, a tournament like Durand Cup could use you know some place on the first first team as well? Because since the importance is given, it's seen as a senior team tournament over the years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, your question is whether I mean, senior team should go. I mean, some senior team players. Yeah, we wanted to do that, but the thing is, uh, our senior team is not yet started training. So this is this might be easily because there's no, there's no senior team players or any high league players playing. Only yeah, not yet started. Uh, yeah. If you see only uh, few high league clubs are there, no ISL clubs are there. They all sending the reserve clubs, Goa, Kolkata. Nobody is sending the first team. That is because it's happening also so early yeah. in the season. Because no, no club has started. We also not started. Senior team is not started too, yeah. and and my first match is on eighth. Yeah. Before it was sixth, and my senior team start our training only after twelfth or something. Yeah. So, so uh, I mean, do you do you see this? What what will be the target for you in the Inter Durand Cup? Then, are you going for the game to be more realistic? To be yeah. more realistic, uh, I would be stupid to say I want to go and win the trophy. You know, it would be more of a learning experience for me and my players. But it's not that you know I just go there, you know, have fun and come home. It would be, it's, it won't be easy for those clubs to you know beat us because I have first game I have Amir, you know, and I've seen the team and I, I'm sure my team can can win them. You know, same with Jamshedpur FC. Yes, East Bengal will be a tough uh, thing for me. But uh, as far as I have. Uh, Been having a look at them, the team. They are young side. You know, the foreigners are not yet come. The coach is not yet arrived. He is arriving today or tomorrow. Exactly. So they, he also has some ten to twelve days with the team. So I'm sure he will also want to like to experiment. You know, 
in first it was my last match was with him i mean with uh, east bengal now they made it uh, on 13th i am playing east bengal before it was 16th but now i am playing in, on 13th against east bengal so first thing is i am not scared of any opponent so i see that my boys are not scared okay, we just go play and we fight winning losing result it it depends you know you don't know i might hold them you know you don't know <laughs> so but you will be playing in east bengal ground as well as yeah. against so the so the advantage for me is you know uh, the ground yeah uh, if if i had to play in salt lake yeah. more bigger pitch you know so my strategy would be different and now it becomes a compact stadium and compact ground so yeah, it might help me pressure i mean you know how our teams feel you played in that ground yeah. so will it be like uh, pressure i mean will it be extra pressure or will go together yeah no i never take pressure i i never do that so if i start taking pressure it comes on the players yeah so i let them play free football so it would be a good match i am for sure east bengal will be surprised to see this youngsters play okay sir so so uh, given the way uh, you know i league second division happens like the, the reserve sides have a sort of handicap that they can't go to the final uh, round and all that how important is it playing tournaments like tour and cup uh, to you know give quality games and exposure to these uh, players how important i think yeah. see uh, like the first time the first thing you asked me like second division whether it was good quality yeah. matches for you i said no it was not so when you play tournaments like this you know uh, durand cup and all then i am trying for second world cup then we have a mayor go mayor cup in kerala so all these places i'll get good competitive teams you know result again it's secondary for me it's it's all about my player learning it's always learning uh see last year uh, i played two tournaments in the row uh, shrinagar and sikkim i lost two matches there after that if you see i played 28 games out of which i lost only three i drew one so it, those matches in the beginning really helps me so now this zoran cup will help me to know my players their level You know, and where I stand, and what all I need to work on to develop those players. So all these competitions will help me and the players both. It really helps. So uh, I mean, you are also uh, an assistant coach in the senior team as well. So what is the level of integration between the reserves and the first team? Will you say like the the exchange of information and the the, uh, the eye of the uh, manager on the reserves? how how closely are they monitored and how close they are considered as a you know adjunct component of the person see uh, i am working closely with uh, kalas you know and it's not that you know uh, i do they just sit down there's a lot of discussion that me he always come for my game and he will watch the players then and after the game we sit together and we discuss about each and every player what what he feels about the uh certain players and what what more can be done to improve and then the philosophy uh, we follow the same philosophy now uh, till till 2016 uh, 17 18 season you know we had uh, john kila who was a dutch guy you know so there was not much uh, communication between the reserve squad the under 18 team and the senior team So now what I have to do is, since they made me the head of youth, so what happens is, I am close to the senior team and I am close to the 15, 18s. So now the link is there. The philosophy is going on. So now the under 15 boys have come. It becomes easy for them to play with me now. Since in under 18, they are comfortable holding the ball the way the manual is played, keeping ball position. So that continuity is there now. So. It's easy. If if Carlos is not coming for the game, we he sees to it that I give him the recording of the game. He watches the recording. Then again, every every training session, five to six boys from the reserve squad. Every day they go for the 
because he needs extra players. There are injuries, you know. There are some players who don't want to play in one day. So every day, new six boys I keep sending. So that way, what happens? Those boys get to learn more, and they get to get the feel of the senior team. Is there a similar set uh, arrangement between the reserve squad and the under 18 squad, or something like that? Like this take them over to the practice. Yeah, we do that. I mean, oh, I mean, a lot of them are under 18 and yeah. 18. Uh, but it, does that happen with the under 15 or under 16 setup? It happens. Yeah. See, what happens uh, now? Till last year, under 18 was in Bellary. So every month, five kids will come from Bellary and yeah. stay with me, train with me. Then I uh, evaluate them. And then I send them back. If I find someone is really good, we keep them here, and they train with us, so that he he was he gets to train with the senior team also. So that way it really helps. And then under 15, he trains with under 18. Yeah. And now we have under 13 and 15. So this year now what happened is we have some 30 boys in under 13. So it's a big squad. So what we have done is out of which some five six players are training with under 15. So the development, the growth is really high because they get to be competitive. Under 18 we were there and under 18 is the age where you need to have more competitive games. So we decided we get under 18 to Bangalore because it's important they get a lot of games. So now they get Duran Cup, Kerala Gold Cup, then we are going to Goa for one tournament. Then we get Bangalore in the Kotea Cup, second division, under 18 I League is there. So they should get around 40, easily 40-45 games in a year. That's that's really good. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's our main main aim to give them more games. So till till last year, under 18 couldn't perform well in the I League because of not getting enough games. But this year, I'm sure they will do well. Yes, sir, could you just uh, tell us a bit more about the facility in Bellary, uh, the residential and all that, mm. and uh, how do you uh, sort of manage? The lives of these kids who have come from elsewhere, and uh, you know they are living here basically you know, in a very new environment and uh, living a very different lifestyle. How difficult it is to sort of make them gel into this whole new uh, yeah. structure. You know, th this year uh, I was out for one and a half months covering six states. We went to Manipur, then Mizoram, uh, Assam, uh, Meghalaya. Punjab and Kerala. The six days we, we shortlisted some 80 kids. They all had come here. And then when, when I was scouting them, I, I had some kids who are 2009 born, just 10 years old, but very talented. You know, but it was again like what you asked me, like how difficult it is. So I also thought it will be very difficult to have these 10 year olds without their parents being alone, you know. So they came here. We had a final trial, then we sent them to Bellary and it was, it was, uh, I thought it would be difficult, but it was really easy, you know, because the kids, I'm sure there are kids from Assam who don't even get two time meal, okay. and they're so poor. I, I was told by the coach, uh, they, they have their rice with black tea, okay. yeah. you know, they're so poor. So you can imagine when they go to such facility and when they get quality food and all. Yeah. You can you can understand what I'm trying to say. Right? <laughs> so the facility what we have in Bellary, it's you can say it's one of the best in Asia. If I, if I want to know of the Qatar, uh, Aspire. Aspire. Yeah. Then you have one in, uh, in Qatar that's Aspire, and then. IIS, I'll rate them the best now, facility wise. Uh, their education is taken care, you know, their facility development is there. We have, inside we have tutors and all, so education is not a problem. Then their food, their clothes, clothing, everything is taken care. So, I, in two months time, I have seen the kids grow in two months time. Because the, amount of the good diet they are getting, you know, the facility, they are really happy. It was not, it is not at all difficult. But I was a bit reluctant in the beginning when I was getting this 2009 one place. You know, it could be difficult. But uh, they are so happy. There. The parents are happy. 
their the kids are in a better place. And these thirty kids, I'm sure, uh, they are so talented. They are so talented that these thirty kids will keep promoting. And then, what we have decided, we want to move, have more kids there instead of uh, having kids of eighteen, fifteen, and all. We'll we'll develop our own own players and keep moving them. So they keep graduating, and we just keep bringing players in under thirteen. Get get all these ten, eleven year old kids. Because I'm sure, the, and and the best part is even give them, they even earn money. You know, at that age, they are getting good stipend. You know, they have some savings, so the parents are happy about it. So, so sir, I mean, you have been uh, active in youth football for a few years now. So, the level of talent that you used to see back then, compared to now, especially the one at Bellary, how far do you think the improvement has happened? A lot, a lot has improved. Uh, because overall, overall, there's lot, lot of development in football in our country right now. Because if you see the amount of kids playing football, it has grown up like anything. There are so many academies coming up. You know, people say this paisa bana raha hai. Of course, you have to charge. Otherwise, how you pay the, how you buy the balls, equipments, you pay the coach. It's it's very important. You need to take money. But the coaching, what they're getting before, they were not getting anything. You know, maybe ten years back, ten years back, we didn't have kids of five, six years old playing football. You know, but now even five years, there's a baby league happening under seven. So that six-year-old is getting matches. He will get twenty-six match in a year. So you can imagine the amount of development he has. So it, 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 the number of kids playing football has grown. The parents' involvement has grown. So that's how we are going to have the development. Another another five ten years, you will see India a different football playing nation for sure. So if I put you on the spot and say like uh, most academies lose most of the kids, uh, you know, in a few years because uh, you know there is a dropout rate very high mm-hmm. in football. How many of this batch of thirty kids do you think will make it to the first team of Bengaluru FC or any other club? See the talent what I have got now. You know, yeah. It's it's too early to say because yeah. what happens? You know, practically what happens if I have a squad of twenty five also? Now say under fifty. We had a squad of 22, okay, out of which 13 has made it to the under 18 team. So 13 means nine players are not being selected. So now that's a good ratio. That's a good ratio. When you talk about 30, what happens is they are growing. The kids are growing. There is lot of uh, changes in their body. So you don't know. Someone cope up with that changes and they improve. So it's too early for me to say that you know how many will make it to the senior team. I can another five years, of course, I can say you know who all can make it to the senior team. But yes, the pool what we have is thirty kids. All of them are very talented kids. So these kids, out of which I I'll say you know not all make it to Bangalore FC senior team. But yes, of course, it will be a pool of players who we can give it to other clubs also. All are talented, but again, you cannot say you know, they are ten year old. Another five years, I don't know what what habits they get into. Of course, they are monitored there, but still, you cannot say some some grows, some will have a good growth, someone won't grow. So you know, on the speed, what happens, what changes happen in his body, you know. Uh, So, do you think, like in a sense, uh, so uh, Bangalore FC and uh, some other clubs will also get into this uh, uh, project of developing kids from early on? Do you think this is going to lead to, you know, training players and transfer of players and paying transfer fees at a very early age, like 13, 15 year olds, or anything? It can happen <laughs> because, see, I tell you, uh, now when I went to for selection, I went for under 13 and under 15, yeah. but I was not getting under 15 players. Why? Because most of the players are signed, and if I want to have a player, if those signed players I like them, you know the clubs are asking for transfer fee. It already started. Okay. So, but under thirteen is not yet started, but that also will start. <laughs> Very soon it will start. So now our main focus is working on the small kids, growing them, so that we don't go for go, go searching for under fifteen players. 
So we have this pool of 30 players out of which 10, 10 or 12 can make it to them because the age group also keep increasing. So they won't remain in under 13th row. So they have to jump to under 15. So when they jump, we have more pool of players coming in. So that way, that's how it's going to be. But yes, what you're saying, it will happen. So, so uh, I mean, you seem to be, you know, uh, uh, working with a uh, hundred different athletes across a lot of uh, age groups. groups. Yeah. I mean, is is this fair to say this is the busiest job you have ever had in your coaching career so far? Yeah, it is <laughs> because <laughs> I was I was uh, I was with the Pune FC, and yeah. it was they made me head of youth only for a year, but there it was only 15 and 18. And the soccer school was managed by, we had one department who used to manage soccer school. So there was not much pressure. But here, till till last year, it was only 13, 15, 18. Now, and then reserve team, of course reserve team and senior team, not much pressure for me. But yes, I have to work with them. You know? But this year we have under 7, under 9, under 11. Three more teams which has come up. So I have to monitor everyone. And their development. So of course, yes, <laughs> it's been. A, but but it's fun, you know. You you it, it it's nice to see your players growing, and you nothing else make you happy. You know when you're in this job, and then you see those kids growing. Because if you see my under 19 now, I feel the under 9 and under 11 they're the best kids we have. The local talents. They have been winning all the games in baby league. Now last game, under 9, they were down one goal. Uh, they were scared, you know, because they were playing Raman Academy. They were a bit scared, you know, what will happen, we'll lose. Because, you know, they are small kids. And they always saying Raman is a good team. So they considered a goal, but they came back, scored four goals. Now, on Sunday I went for the training. They were all so confident, you know, ah, we can beat anyone now. No, and you can see that in the face of the kids, and that's that's development. And our under 11 also, so far they've not got a tough team. So we'll get to know when they when they have a good team playing against them. So it would be more fun. We'll get to know what their level is. But right now, yes, they are good set of boys. So, uh, as a former player yourself, now that you see the facilities that are being given to the uh, next generation of players. Uh, could you tell us one or two things that you wish you had while growing up that would have helped you a lot? <laughs> See, you know, uh, I, I was 1990, 1990 means I was 19, 19 years old. That's when I got into a club, a professional club like Air India. You know? And till then I didn't have a uh, formal training, you know, like how the kids now they get to learn you know, the basics, the ball for each and every kid. You know, we used to really, we never had a ball, you know, we used to fight for a ball. You know, if somebody gets a ball, we get to play, otherwise with the tone ball, you know, you have to play. But now if you see the facilities, you know, the kids get, the jerseys, even my under seven has a beautiful jersey, Bangalore is a jersey. And those days we never got all that. You know, we never got if we had got those training, I'm sure we would have been much better player, much better performance. Right now also if you see the Indian team, they are also the basic is not that good. But down the line, five to ten years, you'll find the Indian team totally different with a lot of good basic quality. You know, they have the knowledge what they are getting now that will really help, which we never got. We, we got to understand football when we were 28, 29. You know, that too nobody tells us. It's, it's on our own. We, we get matured playing, playing, playing so many games. Then we understand what is football. You know, there was our coaches were there who were not licensed coaches. You know, it was their, I don't want to say they are bad coaches, but it was just their what they learned from their coaches, you know. Pass on. It was just a pass on, right? But now what has happened is, there is a lot of uh, tactical changes, you know, what we learn in our license, licensing. See, the basic is same, the 
coaching basic is same. But uh, how to move on with the new trends, that is important. Like what we learned, it was what they learned in 70s. You know, when we are playing in 1998 and 2000, we are learning the same what they learned in 70s and 80s. But now what is happening is, we are giving new new feedback. Basics are the same. How to pass the ball, how to receive, basics are the same. But how to pass in a game situation, before it was you just stand and pass. But now it's more in a game situation, where there is pressure and how you pass the ball, how you receive the ball. So those are the different things which has come now. That really helps the kid. You know, the education part, what the coaches are getting now, you know. So all this Savio and all what they're doing, Richard and all, educating coaches. That's that's really nice. You know? So we have more educated coaches now. So that's that was that was important and which is happening. So when you have so many educated coaches, you have educated players. And they, they know what is football and they will know what is modern trends happening. So that's that's important, and I'm sure India will. India has a lot of money. That's why FIFA wants to invest in India. They're looking upon India. You know. So I'm sure another. See, to be more realistic, 15, 20 years to be in World Cup. 20 years, okay? <laughs> because the generation now who started under nines and all. So in 20 years they will be around 27, 28 years. I'm sure. If they continue playing football and if we pick up. Because if you see, I'm sure you must have seen most of the kids want to play football now. During during my time, the kids won't know the national team players. You know, if you ask a kid, national team, they don't know. Now if you ask my son, he knows the first level, he knows who's reserve, who got uh, who didn't get selected, they know everything. You know? Now Media is there, you know. So, so that's that's development because that was important. During my time, we were we were not known much, but now all the players they, they are in limelight. They want to do more. They want to perform, and every kid want to be Sunil Chetri. They want to be Udanta. So, that's the change. During my time, we'll have a set of uh, like who are 25, 26 who are supporting us. But kids don't know who's Musa or, you know, during my time. But now, the kids know who's Sunil, who's Udanta. So, we have good future. So, so, what was your motivation to pick up football as a player? I don't know. <laughs> I was like, uh, I was in my second standard and from that time, I'm, I've been playing football. Sure. You know, it was just my passion, you can say. I used to just keep watching football. So, I mean, was there good chances to play football, quality football in Mumbai? No, it was not. But yeah, but but at least we had some teams. You had Air India and Mahindra. These were the two teams my time. And then you had the banks. Most of the banks would employ them. But when my young days, we didn't have anything. I used to just play for my school team, college team and that time. How many? You will get two or three games in a year. That's it. So that was not enough. Now you can imagine when I am talking about under nine getting 26 games. Yeah. That's that's too much, and it's good. I feel they get more. It, it's better, but but 26 is not bad. Mm-hmm. Getting 40 40 minutes a day, and each game getting playing time. It's it's awesome. Our time there was nothing. But we had to you know, work on our own. I said, as I said, like, we whatever we learn, we learn, learn on our own. You know, and I had one coach, uh, Kalyani Senmutta. He was the Indian Army coach. So he he worked with me. He used to be alone with me because he felt I could I could grow. So he used to every day he will come on his scooter. Then he will take my cycle and he will ride the cycle and I am supposed to run with him. So during that time that was fitness. Yeah. Everything was fitness, fitness, fitness. But now it's more with the ball, ball, ball. So it's like that. So, so I mean, uh, did you speak to him after like getting called love for the national team for the first time? How was he? My coach? Yeah. Uh, I am still in touch with him. No, he, we, are, we still stay in contact. You know. 
so he keeps guiding me you know and being a bengali is mad about football <laughs> so there is always uh, what do you say he keeps guiding me a lot you know because he don't want things to change he knows modern football a lot of things have changed but he keeps reminding me the basics you know and whatever i am today is because of him because uh, what aggression he impart in me you know uh, that really helps me to put that to my next generation of players because if you're not uh, passionate about what you're doing if you don't enjoy it's not happening if i force them to do things it's not happening if they are not enjoying then there's something wrong in me that i'm not enjoying and I'm, they don't want to perform so it's very really important so when he used to do things for me i used to feel bad but now i realize you know there is a saying no when the when the father keeps shouting at you you feel bad now you become a father you realize what your father said was good and then now your kid is against you so that's how it is you know so yes of course i also used to feel kya khadu se you know he used to be in a scooter sometimes forget about cycle and he used to make me run and i used to run behind him in the scooter you know so the scooter speed you can understand huh? <laughs> and then i used to think what is it? but but see i'm fit today also it's all because of him i realize it now so my boys i tell them you know i i openly tell them you can abuse me you know i don't care but don't make it that you know i hear what you what you say to me <laughs> you can abuse in your mind you can always say bad words no problem but tomorrow you'll always respect me so the end of the day what we look for is their development and result for the club which we are getting so that's more important so one question i mean about you know you were there in air india during uh, you know three months yeah and uh, you were there in pune fc when that was on the verge of closing you have experienced that uh, situation of close now you're in a much better situation hopefully <laughs> but uh, so i mean we have a situation where a lot of clubs are yeah, facing yeah. shutdown and yeah. so having experienced that what do you think is the you know is the major cause that this is happening and how this can be avoided do you think it's very complex yeah <laughs> i mean look if you i mean if you feel comfortable you can see it's nothing like you know uh, they close on because of budget or something they are good club mahindra i know but pune fc piramid they have no problem you know but somewhere they they didn't feel things are going the right way that's it so they they they, they, they just felt you know so i really don't want to say much you know, because it's more controversial sure sir. <laughs> sure i mean just to just to end on a more positive note you were going into the bangalore super uh, yes. Super League is called. Super League. Yeah. So, sir, you are uh, you are going in to defend the title, which is usually you know a harder task. So, what do you see in the team? Uh, what do you see the shape of the team to be in? Uh, is it better than the last time? Do you think it's up to the, to the task now? Because assuming the competition will be of a higher level this time. Yeah. See, uh, there is pressure. Pressure of uh, like last year we were the champion, Super League. Yeah. but compared to last year this uh, this year i have more technically better players but young players you know they all passed out from under 15 you know so they are young boys so but but technically they are much better so you can say i have a very good set this year so you won't know you know we we, we would love to win it again you know but yes under 18 i mean Uh, that's what I feel we should win on the day. Hopefully, we have a good set of boys who are really hardworking and technically they are very good. They are very quick. They are picking up very fast. So I'm sure they are a good set of boys. Because I remember in NFC where the, the year I left, we had a good set of boys, some twenty boys, out of which all are playing in I League and I S. Wow. Take names from Farooq Chowdhury, to Myron Mendes, Ashir Altamash, Ashir Kurenian, 
Bini dan Nasundi, Farouk Jod Bina dan Nasundi, Yuhan Muirang dan Bora They all, all are in the ISL clubs and I like clubs So, so I feel the same with this group you now The group which I have now I, I feel the same about what I had in Pune FC So this is a really talented bunch So, I'm sure we can give more players to the country you now More players to the club Different club because I'm sure all the 30 can't make it to the senior team. So definitely we can give it to the other clubs. So that's the main main aim now. Because BFC, if not here, we want to because last year we had a squad of 22 out of which we have retained only eight. So 14 players. If you want to Chachin Brothers, BFS main, uh, East Bengal. So it's it's good. At least players are getting clubs. That's that's good, right? So I'm happy that the players are getting club, they're earning money, they can look after the family. Because most of the football players come from a very humble background. So I'm sure it helps them a lot. So you heard him, Noshad Musa, former Indian International and current Bengaluru FC youth and reserve team head coach. He was one of the stars when I was at uh, five or six years old first started reading in detail all the reports about Indian football on newspapers and magazines. So it was a very nostalgic moment for him. I was a little bit starstruck. I uh, hope you got a very succinct idea of how his life, how his decades spent in Indian football have been like. That's it for us today. Next week, we will be bringing you another episode with more details about Durant Cup. CFL will be starting. Maybe more updates will come from the Indian national team side. Cotif tournament is also getting nearer. And AIFF and FIFA are going back and forth. Maybe they will communicate further. And by the time we will have another episode, things will be closer to solution than they are now. That's a hell of a hope to have, but let's hold on to that. Come back next week. Thank you.